today uh, we would like to talk about something that uh, has been mentioned a little bit during the rest of the conference, which is the future of haptics. And we would like to get a retrospective onto what all of our speakers said in the past, uh, let's say, one year and a half, something like that. And we will try to do some meta-analysis or research analysis, nothing proper. But uh, Ashley, walk us in this fantastic episode. Well, let's kick things off by letting you know who we are. We kind of gave you a, a little brief, but we'll dive a little bit further in. Um, my name is Ashley Huffman. I'm from Titan Haptics. I'm in strategic partnerships and marketing. Um, I'm also the co-host of the Haptics Club podcast, and you'll also maybe know me from my Haptics uh, newsletter, um, All Things Haptics. I'm... I'm not a <laughs> thanks. I'm not an engineer. I'm not super technical, um, but I'm a haptics hype man. So I see the industry as having a lot of value for consumers, for companies all around. And so one of my roles is to help educate and share the good word with uh, everybody else who doesn't know yet. Eric. Oh, uh, okay. So it's Eric. Hi. I'm. I work in haptics. I think since uh, ten years, something like that. Did my PhD in surface haptics, which it's a kind of full of the radar technology about the surface texture ultrasonic stuff and then after the phd try okay let's try to build a company out of that without knowing anything and uh, we kind of figured it out along the way uh, right now uh, i'm working with fraser as a haptics director and uh, supporting our inter haptics sdk stack for generic haptics devices content creation and david to you yeah um, i'm david parisi i'm a professor at the college of charleston and uh, I started researching haptics around 20 years ago, um, wrote a book on the history of the field, the technology, um, and you know, I've sort of continued to work in this area. Really happy to be here. Also not an engineer, um, so really excited to be in this room and learn from people. I'm the only engineer here. It's terrible, these things. I, I feel attacked. Let's direct all questions to Eric. Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Make me happy. Um, Great. So these are some of the speakers that we had in the, uh, on the podcast. Some of them are here in the room, so you can maybe identify them. And some of them are not, not because we didn't invite them, but because they didn't want to come. So you are all invited to come. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely super interesting because uh, uh, the people that come are of diverse background, right? So we have people from... 45 years of work in academia, like Vincent, like Ed Colcade, and some newbies that just started in haptics. And we really have some kind of really large spectrum of how uh, people uh, f identify with the haptics, right? And uh, our podcast has only been built in a specific way. We have uh, introduced the person, and we have some technical questions regarding their area of expertise. We checked later some teams and uh, arguments. But we have one section, which is the most, let's say, the funniest one, where we invite people to try to be wrong about the future of haptics. We really have like 10, 15 minutes, right, mm -hmm. regarding on what do you think is going to happen. And that's more or less how our podcast is structured. But before that, let's look a little bit about how the podcast evolved in the last year. So we've been blessed to have um, a lot of traction over the last, uh, after the last year, absolutely. I think COVID has kind of helped that. People are stuck. They want to be engaged. They want to learn something new. And um, we've been blessed to have people listening from all around the world, which is really awesome. Um, 27 countries. Um, we've also been kind of touted as this um, top 15% of most shared um, globally. So we've really grown um, just because of the guests we've had, because of the types of people who engage a trusted platform where you can be open, you can be honest, and you can share your insights in a way that can help everyone else in the industry, which is really exciting. So the, the Haptics Club podcast has been growing crazily. We've had three seasons. A ton, I don't know how many guests. It was 40 guests. I don't get that number wrong. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been an amazing experience for us for learning, but also an amazing experience to be able to share things and see the through line between different guests in different industries and, and their problems, their opportunities and challenges. Yeah, what we really hope is that this growth path is the same, maybe anticipates a little bit the growth of the haptic market because um, from our listeners, not haptic specialists really. 
Yeah, we have some optic specialists, but it's mostly people from other fields. And we get feedback say, oh, I didn't know these things. This is amazing. It's a, it's, it's a world that I didn't know that exists that is so interesting. And I would like to apply it to my use cases. And we have also a community, right? We have a Discord channel. It's super active. And it's, it's, you know, it's all about building communities. So this is more or less what, what it is the podcast about. David, as a speaker, how was your experience in the, in the podcast? It was a lot of fun. I uh, really enjoyed my time on the Haptics Club podcast. And uh, I think what is most interesting for me is just the diversity of the speakers that you get. So it's really from, I think, a wide range of fields, you know, including people who are in social sciences, fields that are not necessarily super well represented um, at academic haptics conferences have been guests on your on the podcast. So. Uh, so we have some of the uh, topics. So we divided in three. It's completely arbitrary, these things. But this is uh, just to share a little bit the markets, technology, and field that uh, we covered during the podcast. And uh, we have markets that's the most, let's say, sexy, kind of like XR, automotive, sex tech, of course, um, and gaming, uh, medical, some of it, and some other that are like more like frontiers, like music. And we try to bring together uh, different stages of advancement of the technology, something which is completely far-fetched. Maybe we have a fantastic talk later on with chemical haptics, which is one of the you know, farthest productizable maybe technology that we had on the podcast, and something which is extremely practical. And well, we got a lot of types of technology that we have discussed it through the podcast and field, right? So. This is, and we want to keep this as, you know, a huge melting pot of, uh, let's say, uh, haptic knowledge repository. Can call it like that. Okay, so this is more or less the, top, the podcast topics. And today, what we really would like to discuss about is that we run some analysis onto the future of haptic segment that each a speaker had during the podcast, and uh, we try to tag, let's say, assign keywords of the most repetitive um, topics that came up during what do you think the future haptics will be and what we should care about, right? So what, what are we looking into that? And we organized the uh, topics that came up in this word cloud where the, the uh, dimension of the... Um, of the font is related to how many times it came up, okay? And, uh, and this ties a little bit also with the topics that, right, we found uh, during this analysis. And uh, maybe, David, can you share, like, your topics that you found, you know, over yours? Yeah, so um, I had episodes 11 to 20, and we each went back and listened to the answers that came up in uh, those episodes. Uh, the most common themes that came up were the need to, and I went into this, by the way, expecting it to all be about tech, right? I expected every prediction to be about, like, what new device is going to be big, uh, what new trend is going to be big. And what came up instead, in, at least in my sample, was um, the need for community, the need for education, the need, and it's come up uh, a few times here today, the need for something like a haptics pedagogy, right? Like, how do we grow the community? How do we get new people recruited into it? Um, basically, how do we do education better, um, do outreach better? Um, and really much less of a focus on, you know, what devices are coming down the line. Uh, again, you know, as someone who's read a lot of past predictions for the future of the field, um, a lot of those tended to focus on, uh, on devices. And I think we're in a moment now where people are recognizing, you know, that one of the keys to sort of growing this area is to grow the community rather than to grow, to focus on, you know, technology. And this conference, I think, is evidence of that, too. Um, um, so I did the earliest episodes, which I will kind of consider pre-dual sense um, vibe happening. So this is when it just kind of released and no one had their hands on it yet. So, you know, everyone wasn't answering dual sense as a response. It's an ongoing joke. Um, for folks that I was listening to, some of the key through lines were what is a good haptics experience? Like, what does that mean? Um, how do you respond to that? How do you create that? How do you, what's a barometer for that? Which is very interesting. Another one's related to hand tracking. So 
um, in terms of the world of haptics and hand tracking, how is that going to be a marriage made in heaven? Is, is haptics going to you know, die completely? Um, do you need haptics and hand tracking? So I think that was interesting that it kept coming up as, um, as an important point. And then last but not least, it was, oh, killer applications, which was mentioned earlier today as well. So it's like, what is the thing that's going to drive this um, to be um, huge in the market? What's going to make this something that everyone can understand and play with? Kind of like the iPhone had a killer app of um, a lighter and the beer that you could drink. Like, killer app, super silly. Um, but that's, those are the kind of key points I pulled from the early season. So uh, uh, that's fantastic. Beside that, uh, regarding the inside joke, was pre pre dual sense. We, when we ask uh, our guests, what is for you a good haptics implementation? Pre dual sense was the iPhone, and after dual sense is the dual sense. And happen often, we tell them, tell us what is a good haptic implementation, not iPhone, not dual sense. They they are shocked. They they are not ready for <laughs> sharing these questions. So they I think like. I think one minute to not answering the questions and find whatever other prototypes. So yeah, that's that's a kind of running joke. Sorry, but it's <laughs> prepare if you can prepare about a good adaptive implementation, which is not iPhone and not dual sense. Okay. Okay. Uh, regarding uh, my topic, so uh, one that came up quite a lot is user experience design, ready to understand how haptics is in the, in the global customer journey, and the second one is that vibration will still be king. So this is kind of more or less what came out with these predictions towards, because the, the, the speaker said, if I did put myself at scale, they don't see how in the next five years any other technology can have the, can or complement in a meaningful way HD vibrations, basically. This is more or less how, how these, uh, the, the speaker look into that. And the third one is that, of course, we lack content and we lack even the documentation to produce the content, which is like one step before that. So, and these were like the three main topics that uh, within I, I did like the f from the, uh, let's say, 21st to the 33rd uh, of the podcast, more or less. And these were like our stuff. But maybe let's go to this like prediction word cloud here. And uh, can, <laughs> Ashley, f what's missing in that word cloud? Definitely what's missing from this is uh, accessibility. I think that's something that was shockingly... Or accessibility is there. Which word is missing? The M word. The M word. The M word. Oh, M word. Oh, God. Do I have to say it out loud or can someone else say it? Uh, okay, it's completely missing the <laughs> metaverse. N no speaker ever mentioned in the future of haptics the metaverse. And is how can we interpret that, David? Well, first off, um, part of it is that most of the episodes were recorded pre, what, September 21, right? So no, no one was using the word, right, prior to Zuckerberg, like, uttering it into existence. It was a word that was, you know, not no one, literally no one, but figuratively no one was using the word. And then all of a sudden, it obviously becomes a thing that um, is top of mind uh, for a lot of people, but uh, notably not. Um, people who uh, you guys spoke to in, for the podcast, right? So, um, uh, 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 let's discuss about if they even are synonym. So that's that's a different discussion. So, uh, but yeah, so the metaverse are like a marketing, let's say, term. It didn't came up at all, and of course there is XR there, but XR is, let's say, an entertainment market. Right? It's maybe not a, a profitable entertainment market, but it's hard to argue that VR gaming is not a thing, right? So, but what's, what's, I think this is um, help us to understand that they're quite grounded. They're looking into what's, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And another thing that it's, I feel it's in, important to highlight here, so documentation and education are by far the highest measure, okay? And after that, we have softwares, tools, and multimodality at the same level. So multimodality, it is as important, as, more important than the technology in the, in the view of our speakers that you are using. And I think it ties really well back to some of the discussion we had today, right, David? 
Uh, yeah, I think the other thing that's going on here too is you have this, um, you have a sort of openness in the conversations that I noticed going back through like listening to the podcast episodes, not being one of the hosts. Um, going back through and listening to the episodes, there's a level of, I think, comfort with the guests by this point of the interview so that they're sort of like, it's not maybe front stage persona at that point, right? You're not getting this sort of like marketing answers that you might otherwise get. You're really getting like a sober assessment of, you know, what is, again, that five to 10 year time frame is, I think, maybe preventing people from shooting the moon quite as much, right? The boldness score isn't as high. And instead, it's, it's really, in some cases, like an expression of uh, disappointment and frustration from some of the guests that, uh, who maybe have been in the field a little bit longer and are taking that more sober assessment, right? They've seen these predictions maybe uh, not come true in the time frame that they're forecasted in before. Um, so you're getting, uh, again, a reflection of this need to, to build community as a way to sort of um, maybe help this stuff grow in the future more than it has in the past. Yeah, I think the only thing I would just add to that is um, it was interesting to see some of the people that were new to haptics that were just starting out. A lot of people who were um, kind of like scrappy developers who were like, I can't afford these tools. I like don't really know what to do. They've taken it from a different angle altogether of like cheap, cost effective, which is what the market wants, interestingly enough. And they're also taking it from a like social media community approach. So it's like developing openly. Um, showcasing everything, opening the code. Um, so I think that was an interesting learning from seeing someone who's been in the space for 50 years, 40 years, 30 years, to someone who's been in it for like two or one and a half or a few months. Yeah, and uh, on top of that, it's also interesting to see the split between wearable, as uh, has been mentioned quite a lot, and XR. that are actually used not in the same way. They are completely separated. And there is, um, it seems that there is a quite about boldness, let's say, regarding the uh, development of wearable haptics devices for different uses. There was a musical haptics, there was other kind of use cases, and one of them is XR. So it's really, it's overlapping a part of it, but it's not only wearable for XR. Of course, we have, uh, I mean, most of us have a Apple Watch, right? So, and that's wearable. And uh, it, 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 the haptic communication has a certain meaningful, meaningfulness, and that's a part of this uh, boldness regarding on how the haptics will be. So uh, we, we actually wrote a, a small sentence, right, that uh, ties up a little bit uh, what the, the speaker think about it. Maybe, Ashley, you can, you can read it through. Yeah, let me pull it up and read it out here. It is, oh, future haptics. Future haptics in the next five years. HD haptics used in multimodal experience on wearable devices, lots of software and tools, tools creation to educate a growing community, lots of effort in user experience design. That kind of, that's the growing summary. And that, that that's kind of ties up a little bit, these yeah. kind of things, right? And again, so this is was, I think, a, Interesting, interesting exercises we wanted to share with you. And frankly, I was a bit surprised, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think there was, uh, uh, like I said, uh, an absence of focus on tech and um, really a presence of focus on uh, uh, just, you know, interaction. Um, and then also a need to, I think, uh, something you're going to speak to in a second with, uh, um, uh, with the blog, um, a, a real need to just sort of put more of this history out there in terms of documentation. I know I can speak as a historian, um, going back and trying to trace the history of the field is a little bit challenging because um, especially a lot of the products weren't um, well documented, right? Um, so for me, a lot of times it was going back like with the Wayback Machine, trying to track down like a deleted file. Um, and, you know, that might be necessary for proprietary reasons or whatever, but um, it's really challenging, you know, if you're, whether you're trying to do product development or trying to do history, um, it's really challenging trying to reconstruct this stuff from fragments. So we need more like centralization of archives, I think would maybe be uh, helpful to some people in the room, would definitely be helpful for me. Thanks, so. We want to take the, this moment to announce a little things. We were in the work for a little time. So, and I think it mo this research motivated us to launch this thing. So the podcast started as a repository of knowledge, right? This is what we uh, want it to be. And uh, a written form is another way to have a repository of knowledge and 
expand the capability of the ecosystem to contribute. And uh, uh, we can offer, like, basically we offer a, a scene onto the opportunity to share your thought about haptics, but not only, it's not academic haptics. Mm -hmm. It's about use cases, technology, technology review. How come we don't have an article that shares how good is uh, sorry, God of War Ragnarok haptics in dual sense? There's, you can't read it up, and there's no way for people without testing it to get a grip on that. This is wants to be the place. And we have our editor here, which is uh, Antoine, which offer <laughs> to help us coordinate these things. And the, the idea is that it's a community. It would be happy to count uh, any contribution. Of course, Haptics Club is marketing free podcast, so we don't accept marketing pieces, but we do accept opinions and uh, proposals and uh, use cases that would be interesting for a wider range of n partially not specialized users, uh, readers, sorry. Yeah, I was just, just going to add, I think all of us in this room have been in the position of reinventing the wheel at something we're doing, having to read reports, um, you know, a 100-page report, or trying to listen to some book that you're trying to get through that's, it's lengthy, it's technical, um, and someone could probably just summarize it quite quickly so you can even reference certain sections of it. So I think our goal really is to make this a place where you just don't have to do that. You can come here and learn from different areas, different people, different places around the world, how people do it for robotics, for automotive, for gaming, for accessibility, just cover the gambit um, so we can all kind of learn from each other. And just like as a side note about the Haptics Club, you know, we exist because we invest our own personal time into this, but we do have sponsors. So um, I do have to thank Haptics Industry Forum for sponsoring us. They've, you know, helped keep the lights on, keep us uh, caffeinated. But if you are interested in sponsoring the Haptics Club, like, please reach out. Um, we love what we do. We hope that we provide value to anyone listening. Um, like, we've, we've got great stats so far. We want to keep the, the lights going on. We want to keep promoting epic content that you guys are working on because that's really what the whole goal is. So yeah, just a side note there.